Mark Romanak. And I'm Jake Romanak. Today on Fishing 411, we're at All Grain, Michigan. We're going to be chasing some walleye. Stick around. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, your leader in trolling technology. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, your leader in trolling technology. Jay's Sporting Goods, trust in the tradition. Yakima Bait, home of the rooster tail. Cisco Fishing Systems, fish the finest. Northwest Ontario Tourism Association, there's no place like this. Starcraft Marine, America's oldest aluminum fishing boat line. Evan Rood Outboards, introducing the all new Evan Rood E Tech G2, the outboard of the future, available today. Maxima Fishing Lines, the right line every time. Also, these fine sponsors. Let's set the plate here and get us started. It's early in the season, it's just, uh, just inside of the, the middle of May right now. Water temperature is about 50, and this good spinner bite that happens here every year is just getting started. Most of the fish are on the bottom. A few of them are starting to suspend, so we're mixing up our program here. We're going to still fish the bottom with some traditional stuff, bottom bouncers and spinners with night crawlers. But we're also going to mix it up with some new wave stuff, tadpole spinners, which are, or tadpole divers rather, which is a diving device that we can use to also get our spinners down, but we'll use that for targeting suspended fish. Too early today to see what is actually going to be the best presentation, so we're going to use both and see what happens. First fish so far is, uh, is on the tadpole, which is a suspended setup. I had that one set back 50 feet, and uh, the speed that we're, we're trolling right now, that's down about 20 feet down. So in 25 feet of water, that fish is suspended about five feet off the bottom. And, uh, that's a good sign. It's a little bumpier out here than we had hoped for today, but at least it looks like maybe there's gonna be some biters. All right. All yours, there, Jake. There we go. Still on there, is he? Yep, we're just still right. there. Cool beans. I'll let you try to throw him this way if you can when he comes. Oh, I see him. Well, that's a good start. That's the kind of walleye we're kind of expecting here. Classic eaters, these 18 to 20 inch fish. This is what I would hope to see a lot of today. And uh, we'll see. That's a good start. Five minutes, one in the box. All right. Now the harnesses that we're using today are these hammer time harnesses that are made by Yakima Bait Company. And there's a couple things I like about these. Um, number one, they're tied on fluorocarbon leaders. Fluorocarbon is a much better material. It's stronger, more durable than, uh, than monofilament, and it's clear the fish can't see it. Secondly, they got premium hooks on them. These are number two, uh, red beak hooks, which uh, is my preference for hooks. Number three, they got a little clevis on them, a quick change clevis that allows me to change the blade colors and, and blade sizes as I see fit. And of course, they come in a wide variety of color blades as well. So the Hammer Time Spinner, a um, great product for this walleye bottom bouncer fishing or for fishing with tadpoles. Get a little, little weight there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, this one's doing his darn just to get away. Ooh, oops. Sorry about that, Jake. <laughs> kind of hard to steer them in these waves here. Another nice eater, Dad. About the same size. Well, that's another nice eater. We're out here today in front of the Augre River. In fact, the Augre River is just right there. And what these are is these are post-spawn walleyes, and these are the males that have dropped back. We're fishing over flats right now. Man, they're just eating it. Well, as you can see, it's pretty bumpy out here today. 
Fundamentally, one of the most important things to understand about spinner fishing is you need to control your speed. It's very critical to control speed to control where you're at in the water column. And I've noticed in already this morning, several boats are going upwind here. Big mistake, you don't wanna do that. Use the wind as your ally, don't fight it. Go upwind, set up and come down with the wind at your back. You'll be able to control your speed a lot better. You'll be able to control the direction your boat is going a lot better and you'll be a more successful fisherman. Fish with the wind, don't fight the wind. Additional considerations provided by Argo Amphibious ATV, Extreme Terrain Vehicle Solutions. Additional considerations provided by Ontario's Algoma Country, That Real. Look at that tail flag talk to us. That is so perfect. That is so perfect. I love it. The cool things about what we're doing here is we're using a product produced by Offshore Tackle called Tattle Flag. There's spring-loaded flag systems or articulated flag systems. And that flag starts going down, we can know that there's a fish on there. And that makes a huge difference in being able to detect bites. Thank you, Jake. And uh, otherwise, in these rough seas, you could drag around a fish and not even know that you're dragging a fish around. He can let me come off. No, he's there, he's there. Good. He's there. This is not a big fish, either. This is a small one. Little fish like this, eaters, um, have a nasty habit of biting and then they get drug along by the board. If you don't have one of these articulated flag systems, these tattle flag systems, I could have easily drugged this fish around and never know he was on there. Tattle flag, I watched the flag go down, I knew we had a bite, another fish in the box. I tell you, at slow speed spinner fishing, you have to have tattle flags. So believe it or not, there's a right and a wrong way to hook up a night crawler onto one of these crawler harness rigs. Now if you look at the crawler right here, you can see the little collar that's on the crawler. That right there is actually the front of the crawler. You can see this is the nose, and then that would be the tail. What you wanna do is you wanna hook up the nose of the crawler right on the very tip of your front hook. Then you're gonna go to your back hook, and I like to hook it right behind that collar. So now, when that crawler is riding in the water, it's perfectly straight. You don't have the nose of the crawler overhanging on the hook, you got a perfectly straight presentation. So my dad was talking a little bit earlier about us using the tattle flags. And what that is, is it's a spring-driven flag that allows us to detect very subtle bites. Now these aren't very big fish here today, so we have to use this tattle flag to be able to, to see the strikes when they happen. What you have is you have your front clip, and you have your back clip. That back clip is on a wire and a spring that's up on the front. What we do is we put a little bit of slack in the line right here, and when a fish bites, even the subtle bites, it pulls down the flag. Without that, we wouldn't even be able to see some of these smaller walleyes when they're biting. It's probably about time for us to turn around. The advantage of downwind trolling is that you can control your speed and you can control your depth very well when you're spinner fishing. <laughs> the disadvantage is, once you pull through the fish, you have no recourse but to pull all your gear, turn around, run back up and set up again. So it takes a little bit more time to do that, but trust me, that investment in time is well worth it. With a better presentation, you'll catch more fish. It's time for us to make another run. We're getting ready to set up for another pass and fishing with tadpole divers is a lot like fishing with crankbaits. The further you let them back, the deeper they dive. And so we can control where they run in the water column simply by controlling our lead length. And the easiest way to do that, of course, is with a line counter reel. I've got an Okuma cold water on this rod right here. And this is perfect. I'm just watching the leader go out. I'm at 38, 39, 40. I want to get this one about 45 feet back right there. 45 feet back. It's going to get this one down about that 19, 20 foot down. And that's where I want to be over about 23, 24 feet of water. Then I just need to hitch up my board. Make sure there's enough slack in there so the flag system can articulate. Drop it in the water and then start playing it out to the side. And I like to use a bait clicker because it keeps it under resistance. And then I can set this rod up here in my rod holder and then I can go ahead and start setting another rod while that one's going out to the side. This speeds up the process a little bit and allows me to get my gear in the water as quick as possible. There we go. Now we're starting to mix it up a little bit first three fish have came all on the boards and all on the tadpoles and we just scratched one off the bottom here on a bottom bouncer and uh, you got to do both in this situation some of these fish are on bottom some of them are a little bit off bottom 
And uh, if you don't fish the bottom, you're going to miss some opportunities, some golden opportunities here. So, nice job, Jake. That's a bonus fish right there. The leader. You might want to put him on the bunk yeah. board there. <laughs> he might not make it. Oh, he ain't going to make it. He's not going to make it? No. Oh, I hate to have to throw him back, but it is what it is. Additional considerations provided by Lawrence Electronics. Find, navigate, dominate. Fishing 411 is also brought to you by Okuma, high performance, and Mustang Survival. We save lives for a living. We had something kind of unusual happen in this particular episode. Uh, my youngest son, Jake, started out fishing with us, and then just a little into the trip, he started getting sick. And I don't mean seasick, I mean like sick sick. And so we ended up having to take him back to port and drop him off, and then we went back out and, uh, and scratched out a show. Uh, it started out, the fishing was really good, and then as the day progressed, the fishing got a um, little bit better, and then it tapered off and it actually ended. It wasn't very good at all, but uh, luckily for us, we were able to get enough bites that it turned out to be a pretty decent day on the water. <clears throat> Game on. It's just me and Mr. Walleye. The whole spinner fishing thing is about details, and like they say, the devil is in the details. Little things are going to make the difference for you in spinner fishing. The ability to keep your speed maintained by going downwind, the ability to manipulate things like color, and uh, I gotta grab landing net. This is a halfway decent fish here. Let's see if I can do all this here in one little scoop. Looks like I can. There he is in the bucket. Look at that. Not a bad fish. Not a bad fish at all. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Right now they all seem to be about the same size, and I'm not gonna complain. They're not very big but they're gonna be excellent on the table. Early in the season, I highly recommend going at these fish with a two-pronged approach. The bottom bouncer and spinner is definitely something you wanna do. It is that usually it's a hands down, it's gonna work just about every time. Um, but if those fish start coming up off bottom like we were seeing here, then you're gonna to want to target these fish with some kind of method to fish them suspended. And the tadpole diver is perfect for that because you can still fish spinners, but you can get them to the depth where the fish are suspending the two hand-in-hand -hand fishing tadpole divers and spinners with bottom bouncers and spinners, it's a no-brainer. It works great. This is cool because we got one on the outside, but uh, we got a few lines here that I got to switch. My bottom bouncer's in the way there. And uh, of course, this inside board is in the way. No worries. That fish is hooked. As long as we keep going, no problem. So I'm just going to swing this stuff on the other side here. Now it's out of my way. Now I can continue to go ahead and fight the fish. and. Uh, all you have to do is just make sure the boat continues to move forward and, uh, and you're fine. You don't have to run right to them and grab them quick. In fact, one of the mistakes I see people making uh, with boards is that they want to try to set the hook when they get the rod out of the holder. Oh, no, no, no. That's not the way to do this. Just go ahead, get the rod out of the holder, reel the fish in nice and smooth and easy, take the planer board off, and then continue to fight the fish. If you start jerking on that rod, rather than setting the hook, you're more likely just to pull the hooks out of the fish. And obviously, we don't want that to happen. Take it out front, take it out from the back, pull it all nice and tight. And now it's just me and the fish. <clears throat> That's how you do it. Feels like a little better fish here, too. There comes the tadpole. Oh, yeah. It's a really nice fish. Really nice walleye. Just what we're after today. There we go. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That one's a little better. A little more meat on them fillets. All right. Spinner fishing for walleyes. It's a spring classic. Well, that fish and most of our fish so far this morning have come on these offshore tackle tadpoles. It's a diving device, and you can see where they get their name. It's got a big head and a little skinny tail, so they look like a tadpole. And when I've got it mounted on my line here with a snap, and when I put it on a snap, that snap goes to that elbow and that, that tadpole is going to run like that in the water. Back here, trailing behind it is my leader, that's my hammer time spinner. So the tadpole is my device to get down to depth. Once we catch a fish, 
that snap slides to the front like that, and now we're dealing with a weight system that's in line that doesn't have any resistance. Like when I'm fighting the fish, all I feel is the weight of the fish. I don't feel the resistance of the diver. These things are ingenious, they're simple to fish, and here's all you need to know. When you put it in the water, you gotta give it a little slack at first to make sure that that snap slides to the elbow. Look back there, make sure your harnesses are spinning around good, make sure your blades are rotating. Zero out your line counter and let it out. And that one happened to come 40 back. So we'll just duplicate that. I'll let out 40 feet of line, put the planer board on, send it out to the side, and we'll be fishing again. Additional considerations provided by Stryker Brands. Give Mother Nature the cold shoulder. And Bait Rigs Tackle, America's innovator of fine fishing products. Fishing 411 is also brought to you by Fishhawk Electronics. Featuring Fishhawk's Catch Fish Guarantee. I want to talk a little bit about our sonar and how it's playing into our success today. I've got a Lowrance HDS9 touchscreen unit on the boat here and I've split the screen in half. Half of the screen is sonar, half of the screen is the plotter page. And for every single fish that we've caught, what I've done is I've dropped a waypoint uh, to indicate where that fish was. Now this is a two-day process. We actually came out here a day ago and pre-fished to be able to figure out these fish. Then we came back today to shoot a television show. So what I have is a whole bunch of waypoints on the screen here. Now not all of them are from today. So in order for me to identify fish that were caught yesterday to fish that were caught today, I changed the icons and so they're different. So I can look on the screen there and I can kind of get a reference for where I caught them before and where I'm catching them today. Why do we do that? Because over time these fish move and as you add more icons, you'll see that starting to develop. And you'll look at your graph and you'll be able to see, geez, these fish were in 22 feet of water, now they've dropped out to 24 feet of water. And you'll see those kinds of transitions and you can stay on those fish. So every day that I'm on the water, I change the icon so that each day is a unique and special day. If I wanted to change the plot trails, I could do that too. I could change the colors of those so I could be following a red plot trail on one day and a blue plot trail on the next day if I wanted to. So those are the kinds of features that these graphs have that make it a lot easier for you to manage your fishing from day to day to day. <laughs> you gotta love that. I cleared my bottom bouncer line. It was on this side here and that's where the last fish come from. I cleaned my bottom bouncer line, put it over on the other side of the boat and uh, go to pick it up to put it back where it belongs and it's got a fish on it. <laughs> you gotta love that. You gotta love that. I'm gonna try an alley-oop here. Usually I don't do this, but he's a small one. We can just alley-oop him in. <laughs> I got a feeling we're gonna get our wallies today. They're starting to bite pretty good. <laughs> That's a good old guy right there. We're gonna have to put him on the tape and make sure he's the legal size. Oh yeah. Well over 15 inches. That's another nice eater. Well, the tadpoles that we use today are an offshore tackle product. Let me get one out of here and I'll show you what they look like. Basically, they come in four different sizes. The ones that we use today were number ones. They weigh one ounce. They also have a two, they have a three, and then they have a larger one yet called the Magnum. So they have four different sizes of these. For walleye fishing, I recommend the ones and twos. I think they're the ones that are gonna work the best for your most walleye fishing applications, but there are some times for deep water where you may wanna use a three or a Magnum. But if you're gonna stock up on these things, the ones and twos are gonna be the sizes you need the most of. Rod holders, let's talk a little bit about rod holders. You notice that on my boat here, I've got track mounted systems, so I can use a variety of different rod holders. Of course, these are Cisco's, and up here I've got my tube rod holders. Now, whenever I'm fishing planer boards, I prefer to have a tube style rod holder and I put those rod holders forward in my program here. So I've got these up here as far forward as I can in my boat. So my planer boards are pulled forward. They got great outward coverage and they're way up as far forward as possible. As I walk back here, I've got this rod holder that's doing nothing right now. Actually, that's my spare. So when I'm clearing the rod from the other side, I can put it in here. Then at the back here, I've got my bottom bouncer rod back here in a different kind. These are called saddle rod holders. Now the reason I'm doing this differently is for a bottom bouncer, this is just straight out the back of the boat. There's not a planer board or anything on it. And I want that rod tip down closer to the water. So with a saddle style holder, I can adjust this right down to the water. I can bring it up this way if I want. But me, ideally, I want it right down there close to the water like that. And when that rod goes like it just did a minute ago, I just grab it and lift it straight out like that. So I come tight on the fish immediately. So saddle rod holders are ideal for flat lines. 
Tube rod holders are ideal for planer boards, and you can't beat track mounted systems because all this stuff can slide in here and slide out anytime I want it. Say I'm gonna jig fish tomorrow and I don't need rod holders, all this stuff can come out of the boat and I don't have to have that on the boat if I don't want it. Track mounted system, it's the way to go. Depth, how do you tell how deep a tadpole is running? Well, they're very much like crankbaits in that the more line you let out, the deeper they run. Precision Trolling Data has these really neat little stickers that have dive curve charts on them that tell you how deep the tadpole is gonna run based on the speed you're fishing and also how much line you're letting out. They only cost $1.99 a piece and you can find them at precisiontrollingdata.com. Sometimes you gotta tease them into biting. Literally, what I did that time, I saw the board move a little bit. So I opened up the bale and I let the board go back just a couple of feet and then put it back in gear. And what happened is that that spinner dropped back, of course. And as the spinner dropped back, I think that's what it was. That's what it took just to get that fish to get excited enough to actually bite it and run with it. And now, it's just me and Mr. Wally, and he is definitely on there. Staying down really nice. I think this is going to be a decent fish right here. Oh, yeah. Like I said, they're all cookie cutters. They all want to be right about in that same size range. <laughs> My name is Mark Romanak, and you've been watching Fishing 401. I think this constitutes a limit of walleye. It's time for us to get off the water. Hope you had a good time today and learned a thing or two about spinner fishing. If you get up this way, all great. It's an excellent port. Anytime in the month of May or June, you're going to go home with a bunch of eaters like this. Closed captioning is provided by Orca Coolers, built for everyday use and total abuse. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, your leader in trolling technology. Jay's Sporting Goods, trust in the tradition. Yakima Bait, home of the rooster tail. Cisco Fishing Systems, fish the finest. Northwest Ontario Tourism Association, there's no place like this. Starcraft Marine, America's oldest aluminum fishing boat line. Evan Rood Outboards, introducing the all new Evan Rood E Tech G2, the outboard of the future, available today. Maxima Fishing Lines, the right line every time. Well, that one got away, and that's just part of the game. When you're going really slow, like this spinner fishing, these fish are not getting hooked really strongly. You're barely moving, 1.2.